Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Greg Michalowski from ForexLive.com. I'm joined here with Adam Button, and uh, we're going to uh, go through uh, what's uh, happening here in, in the markets and, uh, in particular, take a preview of the U.S. employment report. Before we get started, let me remind everybody that trading foreign exchange carries a high level of risk that may not be suitable for all investors. In addition to that, leverage creates additional risk and loss exposure. Should you decide to trade foreign exchange, carefully consider your investment objectives, your experience level, your risk tolerance. You can lose all or part of your risk capital in the foreign exchange market, so be aware and be prepared. Adam, how you doing? Hey, Greg. It was an exciting day, exciting couple days. Uh, you know, so much data yesterday, so many big market moves, and then the ECB today, and uh, you know, 11-year lows in the euro. It's uh, it's a great market. Right. Um, we did have the uh, ECB. In, uh, well, we had the interest rate decision. We knew that was going to be nothing. But uh, why don't you give us a, an overview of what you thought uh, from Draghi's comments? And um, maybe I know you want to talk a little bit about the bond market. So, floor is yours. Yeah, yeah. The big question about the ECB was what were they going to buy and how much and at what levels. Uh, and you have you know trillions of euros denominated debt uh, trading with a negative yield, and you know if the ECB is buying something with a negative yield, yield you're, they're essentially paying um, to hold bonds. And the question was, would they do that? Draghi said yes, they would, all the way down to negative point two um, mm -hmm. percent on the yield. So. Uh, that's a go. That hurt the euro. The good news was they revised higher growth forecasts, and and the way you saw euro trading going was the, the growth forecast came first. You saw the euro spike up to the highs of the day. Um, so growth now this year they expect at 1.5 percent instead of 1 percent. A little higher next year, higher even than the year after that. Higher inflation forecasts as well, except for this year. So out into 2016, 2017, um, and. So the euro went up, and then we started talking about buying bonds with a negative yield, buying 60 trillion a month, uh, 60 billion a month in euros, and straight back down. And the, and the driver really was the bond market. If you look at Spanish tens now down eight basis points on the day to 1.28 percent, uh, this is a shockingly low yield. So you know, the euro down, and it, it didn't really take much. Uh, those, those headlines shouldn't have been a huge shock, but. It was already 11 year low yesterday, and you know broke through 110, and just kept going down. But the, you know the interesting point, if you check the story at Forex Live, is about bond issuance now in Europe. So Ber Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway today floated European denominated bonds. So now corporates are seeing these low rates. They can go to Europe and borrow at next to nothing. Um, GDF Suez borrowed for two years um, yesterday at 0.13 basis points. So they basically don't pay at all to borrow for two years. Warren Buffett getting in on it. He launched about a 20-year bond. Um, it, it, and they're only paying 1.7 percent. Or similarly, similarly in the U.S., they've been up over 3 percent. So it's interesting, though, that the real interesting part for the FX market isn't that they're doing it. It's that he said, we're doing it in Europe, we're going to launch the bond there, and then we're going to take it and straight up convert it back into U.S. dollars mm -hmm. and then keep it here. You know, eventually they have to convert it back in 20 years when they have to pay it off um, and, you know, the quarterly payments, which are much smaller. So if that's a thing, if that's a you know, something that someone's going to do is very, very bearish for the euro, and it and it makes me think. You know, six months from now, we'll be looking back at 110 and saying, you know, it, it seems like an 11-year low, but we should be you know, rushing out the door, and maybe that's what the chart says as well. That you know, that's an interesting point as well. Uh, you know, and and I think personally about uh, let's say the stock market over Europe. There's a lot of talk about uh, money flowing from the U.S. into um, European. Uh, stock markets and obvious, and we're seeing huge gains in German German market this year relative to the U.S. market. And that you know the thing that I was able to find is an ETF that hedges that ex that euro exposure, uh, so I can get the pure play here in the United States on European stocks moving higher. Same type type of idea, isn't it, uh, with the bond bond idea? Yeah, I think it is that a Wisdom Tree ETF or, or something like that. I think they made one, and it was a great trade on on the Japanese yen when you had the yen was falling so much and the Nikkei was ripping. But in dollar terms, it wasn't such a great trade. But if you hedged off the currency risk, it, it was an incredible trade. And you know, it's, it's it's a very similar. That was a straight QE trade in Japan, mm -hmm. and it's the same playbook here because it's the same play that the ECBs made. Uh, so that that's a great. I mean, it's a great way to look at it. If corporates can borrow. That cheap and and buy back their own shares, just like they've done in the U.S. for for the last few years. They'll they'll do it even more so there because bond 
bond, or borrowing rates are are that much cheaper, and the ECB is, you know, the first bond buys are coming next week, so the wave of QE hasn't even hit yet. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's um, interesting but, dy dynamics and uh, certainly points uh, toward that um, lower, um, you know, but, but, you know the, the trend that we're seeing in the euro, you know, euro, euro especially. What, what is it on the chart? You know, you have a chart that's 11 year low. I mean, you have to scroll all the way out to the, to the start of the last decade to even see any kind of levels. You know, what's the, the playbook when you have a chart that really doesn't have, you know, great support on it anywhere? Uh, you know that that's a good good question, and the uh, way the way that I I suggest traders doing it, Adam, is is to look back, uh, you know, kind of uh, you know look at first hourly charts. Like today today we moved to new 11 year lows, and um, you know I was able to draw a trend line across the top here and put a parallel trend line on the bottom, a channel trend line, and lo and behold, the market ended up finding that support down there. And, and traders, traders, when they're searching for levels where where there isn't any, will always, uh, you know, try to build build something off of something, you know. And 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 the something here is this bottom channel trend line. A lot of times, channel will come into play, and you'll be able to uh, find find some support levels. So that so that is, uh, you know, that is one of one of the things that I suggest traders traders do from a, a chart standpoint is to, you know, always always connect those lows to lows and try to figure out and 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 look for channels. And if you can, and if if the if it's a downward sloping channel as well, like you can imagine that tomorrow. At the at the time of the non-farm payrolls, this channel trend line is going to be somewhere around the 109.50 level. So um, you know, if we go into sideways here, and then we have the uh, non-farm payroll number come out, and it comes out stronger in the euro, starts to head down, you're going to be looking down toward this as a target level down here. That's the only thing really you can go on off the off things like the monthly chart. You know, I, I, my next support level off the monthly chart comes in at 109.17 level, and then really 107.59. This low right here. Right. So there's there's not a lot uh, when you, when you look at it that way, but um, but you, know, you, you would no, prefer to use something like the shorter term rather than scaling all the way out and looking at something from 2003, unless it stands out as a particularly important. <laughs> Trend or uh, right, I yeah. You know, I think I think those swing lows at uh, that uh, 2003 um, lo low price, um, right, uh, right through here. You know, that that that's where the market's going to be looking for if we get a stronger number uh, number tomorrow. Is, is you know they're going to have in their mindset that's where we're heading. And you pointed out this this trend line right here. You know that may be you know where we're heading heading there as well. I mean when, when you when you talk about the euro in a 109 handle, um, you know getting to 107.59 is really not that much. You know it's it's certainly doable. I know think the markets are oversold, but in trend markets they get oversold. So well, that's um, a good question. I look at that chart. I think I see nine or ten consecutive months down. You know it it mm -hmm. is that should traders be looking at oversold, overbought sort of indicators? Um, and, and what are your thoughts on that? Personally, Adam, uh, you know, I know. I mean, look at this this uh, entire move to the downside here. But uh, you know, it's I, I asked early on in in the year, or when we were we were in January, whether traders thought we'd get back to the uh, the high price for the year came out on the first trading day of the year. Whether we're going to get back to that level, and they said no. So you can kind of just throw this whole area out here and just you know, where are we? Where are we now? But uh, um, what um, in oversold markets, they and, and in oversold trending markets, trending markets can continue to be trend. Trends are fast. Trends are directional. Trends tend to move in larger trading ranges than you expect. So the fact that we're continuing to move lower is because people try to buy dips, and they end up having to. Puke them out again, or sell them out again. It's just uh, you know, just a, a forever process here. Um, even even in today's um, today's uh, today's trade, the one uh, one ten ninety seven that was our old uh, low from January. Well, we had the draggy comments. We moved above there for a nanosecond, you know, or it seemed that way, and then we're back down below the one ten ninety seven, pushing away from this area. Even though the market may be oversold, even though the uh, CFTC data says that the market is uh, you know over overextended to the short side in a trending market, it 
can do that to you. So what I what I what I like to look for, or or you know, just to sum it all up, if we if let's say we go below this trend line right here, and we start to accelerate the the trend to the downside, and then we move back above it. That line now becomes a risk-defining level, whereas an RSI or a stochastic, it doesn't really tell you where you're wrong, but this line right here will tell you where, where if you bought the market when it moves back above it, that if it goes back below it, then you get out of that trade, but an RSI is not going to tell you that. So I always look for a line or, you know, where it's bullish above, bearish below. And go from there. It almost works like a trailing stop in that sense, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know. I mean, what what was support becomes resistance, and you know, just when it breaks that line, you continue to look for that momentum in the direction. If and it breaks back above it, get out because the market's telling you something. So, what do you think about the? Uh, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about the fundamentals that you're seeing in in the employment report, and then any sort of trade thoughts that you may have in regard to that. Yeah, it's Jobs Friday. Um, I mean, nothing better than Jobs Friday. It's probably not as much of an event as it was probably over the last two years here and there. Um, the the Fed is a little more focused on wage growth right now. The jobs are there. I mean, the U.S. isn't in any sort of crippling jobs uh, hole that it that it was in for so long. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a decent jobs market, and whether it's a little bit more decent or a little bit less decent, I think the trend is so well established now. Even like a currency trend, I mean, the downtrend in the euro, it's it's like the only trade, and and whether there's a blip for a day or two or a month, it, it's still it's, it's getting better in, in the jobs picture in the U.S. And the market's going to take it like that really no matter what the data is. Um, so let, let's just quickly through the numbers, expecting two, 235K, that's mm -hmm. the consensus. Um, unemployment rate is expected at 5.6%. So beyond, you know, the first trade is always going to be on that first number, 235, higher or lower. Standard deviation is around 25K, so you one standard deviation probably doesn't mean anything, so you're going to want to be over 260 or below 210 before the market you know, takes a lot out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, unemployment rate 5.6%, expected to tick down one tick from 5.7%. Always watch, just as a, as, a, as a point of reference, the participation rate, which is what the unemployment rate is driven from. If fewer people are participating and that drives down unemployment, it's not the greatest sign because it doesn't mean more people are working. It means perhaps more people have given up looking for work or, or they've grown old um, and retired. So 62.9 is the number on that. Um, and, and the two, two numbers that I like to look at uh, as, a, as a good preview are the ISM manufacturing and non-manufacturing reports. They both have an employment components. Mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing was a bit on the strong side, but if you look at manufacturing, it's now a very small part of the American workforce, and the layoffs were likely in the oil and gas sector, which counts as manufacturing. Um, the the non-manufacturing ISM report is much more representative, and to me it's a very good um, predictor oftentimes in on-farm payrolls. It was 56.4 last month. It was a strong meeting, strong reading. It was the in in January it was 51.6. So it moved up about five points. That's a good sign for non-farm payrolls. Um, and and another one, you know, we saw with ADP, um, it wasn't just the main number, but it was the revision. What do you, what are your thoughts on on trading on that? Um, yeah, yeah. The um, the revisions I think are. Are, uh, well, in, in ADP, it was catching up to what the the private sector payrolls. I, I, you know, it's been ATP has kind of been uh, moving below or staying below the um, the private sector payrolls, which it's supposed to mimic. Uh, and uh, you know, one last month we had what 257 in in the private sector or somewhere around there in the non-farm payroll. So it, they revised it up to the 250 this month, kind of caught up to that. But what we've been seeing over the the uh, the near term in the just the labor department non-farm payrolls is this, is this two month revision. Um, in 17 of the last 22 months, we've had a positive revision, a uh, two month revision for the uh, non-farm payrolls, and so that's, so that's a big percentage of of uh, up revisions. Um, only two times in the last year or so have we had a downward revision, and uh, most of the ga gains. Uh, the average gain has been about 48,000 uh, revision to the upside, whereas the downside has only been about 28,000. That might be a wild card in, in tomorrow's report as well to see if 
uh, if the revisions uh, come out positive or negative, whether we keep that string going as far as up revisions or is there a, uh, a down revision. Last month the revisions were a whopping 147,000. That was really a, um, a wild card there. That was a heck of a and propel, propelled the uh, you know the dollar higher as a result of that. So keep an eye out for that that revision. I think in the report tomorrow, and um, uh, we'll, um, that, that was a it, it may have an impact in ADP as well. It was just a little bit below estimates, and then the revision was strong, and the dollar was strong on the revision, right. not, not necessarily the number, because it was close enough to consensus. Um, what you know? Let's talk a bit more about trading it. I. You know, I talk about this dollar trend, and and for me, the, the strategy is buy the dollar, and it's mm -hmm. really just when you buy the dollar. It's been the, you know, almost can't miss trade if you bought it and held it long enough for the last eight months. Was the, was the dollar? It's been awfully difficult to lose money in dollar longs, and you know, it, it, you would think it would come to an end, but it it ends when it ends, and there's no reason to see it ending now. Maybe it ends when the you know the Fed changes direction, or or changes tone, um, but I think you know. What do you think you do if it's a, if it's a soft number here, or soft revisions, or soft uh, employment? Well, I think the market's preparing for something a, a disappointment. I mean, I, the uh, the weather is a wild card. Do you, you know, do you think the weather might have an impact? Well, I th I think the that's what the, the the excuse will be. If it's right. if it's bad, the market will say you know the, the U.S. dollar will drop on the knee jerk, no doubt. If it's bad, right. yeah. but it will get brushed aside, it might take a day, it might take two days, it might only take a few hours, and the market will get back to doing what it does, which is buying U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's been like a bulldozer, the dollar, whenever it hits bad news, it, you know, it might slow down, it might dig in, but it eventually just keeps moving forward, um, and, and I just can't, I think for me that's probably would be my ideal trade, is if you had a bad number. Mm -hmm. um, Wait for the dust to settle a little bit, and and I don't think I don't think you try to pick the bottom. Wait for it to level out. The dollar's not going to fall and shoot right back up. I think it'll fall base a little bit, and then maybe around lunchtime you start to look um, for for a spot to get in. Um, and and you know even today, just just an amazing move in the dollar. And on the charts, you know one that we've been keeping a lot an eye on. I think even last time we talked was was dollar yen. It's been stuck in this range. Um, mm -hmm. For a long time, we're getting up to the top of it. The dollar is very strong at the moment, but it hasn't. You know, you might have thought the way the Aussies have been beaten up, the the key, uh, the um, euro, that, that maybe this would be ready for a run. What What are you thinking with the dollar yen chart? Uh, you know, I, I've I've start to put it out on a, on a four hour chart here at the suggestion of some of our readers. Uh, readers, I usually look at the hourly char chart, but you know, and see all the up and down activity. But even here on the four minute four hour chart, it's really uh, quite a um, an up and down type of uh, t up and down type of market. What what I what I like about um, what we saw through here. Is we had a uh, you know some highs through here and it looks clearer on on the um, on the hourly chart but there was a bunch of a series of highs through here where the market found resistance here resistance here resistance here let me zoom in a little bit here just to uh, get that clear there we go so we had resistance here Resi you see all these highs through here these little swing highs through here and then we had this move to the upside and then we kind of waffle around here right here right here where the market came down to this uh, this area right here we, we found that bounce and, and that also came against the 50 percent retracement of this move to the downside so we had this um, this area here where we had lots of swing highs and lows and then we, we started we based off of that and moved higher so it is going you know it's anticipating something more positive here a little bit more you know move to the upside but saying that saying that I'll zoom out a little bit more more as we have a lot of a lot of uh, congested and old highs right here that's going to be going to prove tr prove trouble for the uh, dollar versus yen but ultimately if we're able to get above the 12080 level and work our way up above the 121 level then then uh, you know it's, it should be smooth sailing to the upside uh, for this pair at least uh, t toward the toward the high there at the 12183 3 level in in the dollar yen and see if we can keep keep the market uh, Moving, moving higher, higher there. Uh, above that, uh, you know, we we have to go back to December where we uh, we moved up above the, you know, and moved up. Well, that's a one twenty one eighty three level there. So uh, that's it, where, that's where we're going. That's where we're at. And it reminds me again that, that the trade in the dollar is to be get in, 
you know, get in when you can. It might not be at the best level or the first level that you wanted to get in at, and just hang on for dear life. And I think if you start to get up and pass that 120, 180, even above the 121, it, you start to get into that kind of scenario again where you just have to do your best and, and try to weather it out if you want to hang on a little bit longer. Um, because the moves can last. And this one, mm -hmm. it's, it's calmed down a little bit. That, I mean, we look at the CFTC numbers you mentioned. There mm -hmm. aren't that many dollar-yen longs compared to what there was six right. or six, eight months ago. So there's there's a compelling case to get in and stay in if if you can handle it. But, you know, that's not always the greatest trade. You would have made a thought the same thing in dollar CAD yesterday, um, crashed down on the Bank of Canada and, and took it all back today, um, you know, just on a yeah. strong dollar. Mm -hmm. but, I know it. Um, it um, you know, yet yesterday I kind of defied defied the dollar, the dollar can, but today it kind of kind of um, caught can. up to it itself and, um, and, and started uh, starts move. You know, the focus turned back to the dollar. Would you would you be would you be a buyer down here around the one nineteen thirty or so yes. level? Of the dollar? Well, that's the other question. What do you do if it's a yeah bad a report? Number, a good I mean, report. I think you you get in the bad report. Those that is a nice level that you pointed out there. It was around one nineteen thirty and dollar yen. Dollar yen is the pair I like to trade best on okay. payrolls. Um, because it is more of a straightforward reaction, uh, and it, you know, but at the same time, keep an eye out on on the bond market. I just don't see any way, though, that even if it's a strong report or a very strong report, it changes the Fed discussion too much. No. So for me, the if the magnitude gets out over 130 pips, even 100 pips, is probably if you're an interday trader, that's probably it. I, I just don't. It's not the big event, the greatest, you know, CNBC, this is the biggest non-farm payrolls of all time sort of event anymore. Um, it's it, the wage growth, inflation, um, th those those reports are, are gaining traction and, and just anything the Fed says. And then it's only a week until the Fed, right? right. So it, it's what, next next Wednesday, six days, so mm -hmm. get ready for that. All right. Um, I think why don't we wrap it up there, unless you have anything else to add? No, man. Well, all right, um, but um, so uh, prepare, uh, we'll be putting up some more commentary, uh, and I'll put up some more levels uh, before the number tomorrow uh, for the uh, currency pairs like the euro and, and the dollar versus yen. Uh, but um, you know, I think you know I, I would agree with Adam that uh, any sort of a weakness that we see in the dollar would probably be uh, bought, bought, uh, bought up by the uh, market. So if you see the euro, you know, somewhere around the, uh, you know, the 100 hour moving average or uh, maybe up to where we had the highs, highs yesterday. Watch it, pay attention, see what happens, look for those failures and look for the reverses about back to the downside and we'll see how it all go, goes. Well, thank you, Adam, and uh, good fortune to um, everyone out there. And uh, we'll talk again uh, sometime soon. Good fortune. Thanks, to you. Bye bye now. Thank you.